Wyatt Earp became a living legend throughout a long and often turbulent life. At one time or another, he was a brothel owner, a saloon keeper, a lawman in different jurisdictions, a miner of gold and silver, a gambler, and a professional referee for boxing matches. However, he became a consultant for Western films in Hollywood late in life, but Wyatt's detractors claimed that his reputation was inflated and he was both a crooked referee and an unreliable source for stories of his exploits. Still, his countless admirers disagreed and supported him as one of the toughest law enforcement officers in the American West. Wyatt inspired songs, movies, and countless touristy reenactments, but who was the man behind the myth? Was he really as good as the stories make him seem? We've all heard about his heroic deeds, but there was chilling darkness to this legendary figure. Stay tuned to discover the 10 things you didn't know about Wyatt Earp. Let's dive right in. Number 10. Wyatt Earp was arrested for murder after the gunfight at O.K. Corral. In 1879, Wyatt arrived in the silver mining boom town of Tombstone, Arizona, and eventually got periodic work as a law officer. The famous gunfight happened on the afternoon of October 26, 1881, in a lot behind the O.K. Corral, when Wyatt and his brothers Virgil and Morgan, along with Doc Holliday, confronted cattle-thieving brothers Billy and Ike Clanton and Frank and Tom McLowry. Virgil Earp instructed the boys to surrender their guns, but instead, shots were fired. Although it's unclear who pulled the trigger first, the shootout, which allegedly lasted less than a minute, left three people dead, Frank and Tom McLowry and Billy Clanton. Following that, the Earps and Holiday got arrested for murder, and late November 1881, they were acquitted in court. A month later, gunmen tried to murder Virgil Earp outside a Tombstone saloon. He survived, but was left with serious injuries to one arm. Wyatt, who had been appointed a deputy U.S. Marshal, organized a posse to go after the Clanton family. Ike Clanton and another brother surrendered to the authorities, and charges against them in connection with Virgil's shooting got dropped. In March 1882, gunmen murdered Morgan Earp while he was with Wyatt at the Tombstone Pool Hall. Exacting revenge, Wyatt and his posse killed several cowboys. The killing soiled Wyatt's reputation in Tombstone, and he soon fled. Number 9. The Real Wyatt Earp Had No Children We were introduced to multiple other past heirs from the show, all of them direct descendants of the great Wyatt Earp. This means, of course, that none of this would have been possible if the legend hadn't left any children. However, when it comes to the real-life side of things, that's exactly what happened. As much as we wish something besides the legendary status of Wyatt Earp was real, it isn't. The original patriarch of the Earp family took his name to the grave and left no offspring that we know of. Thank God for artistic liberties. Number 8. Wyatt Earp Had Four Wives Just because good old Wyatt Earp didn't manage to produce any offspring that we know of, this doesn't mean that he didn't have his fair share of fun while he was still alive. We all know he was one heck of a gunman, and he was the only participant in the famous gunfight at the OK Corral who managed to get away without a scratch. But he did more than just participate in gunfights. Wyatt Earp actually had four different wives. He could be considered the American Henry VIII of his time. Save he didn't kill any of his wives. He just really liked ladies, so he took it upon himself to marry four of them. Number 7. Wyatt Earp Started Off on the Wrong Side of the Law As a young Wyatt Earp grew up, he fell in with a group of criminals and roughnecks. By his mid-twenties, he found himself on the wrong side of the law more often than not. Eventually, law enforcement caught up with him, and Earp was charged with horse theft. A U.S. Marshal apprehended him and threw him in jail to wait trial, but Earp wasn't going to sit around and wait for his fate. Shortly before his sentencing, he escaped from the cell and headed for Peoria, Illinois, but his troubles were far from over. Number 6. Wyatt Earp's first experience as a lawman was in Lamar, Missouri. In 1869, the Earp family relocated to Missouri, and Wyatt took over the job as town constable from his father. He married his first wife there in 1870, but her sudden death from typhoid fever deeply affected Wyatt, and his fortunes declined. He was charged with embezzling funds collected from Lamar's schools, which it was his job to collect. Moreover, Wyatt was sued by citizens of the town for filing false amounts of money collected, deflating them, and keeping the difference, which made citizens lose property. Number 5. Wyatt Settled Arguments With His Fists Wyatt inherited his dad's wild temper, which ended up costing him his job in Wichita. In 1876, a former marshal accused him of impropriety, so Wyatt beat the ever-loving tar out of him. This encounter, plus the allegations of improper conduct, lost Wyatt his gig with the marshal soon after. So, Wyatt did what he did best. He left town and went to join his brother somewhere else. This time, his brother James had set up yet another brothel in Dodge City. So, Wyatt met up with him there and started all over again. Number 4. Wyatt Wasn't Doc's Only Friend Doc Holliday was an oddity in several parts of the West. He was an educated Southerner who made money through gambling so he could rub people the wrong way. 
Holiday's moodiness, a product perhaps of suffering for years with tuberculosis, was usually compounded by drinking, and later, by the drug laudamin, which he took for pain. That contributed to his reputation as a loner. Still, he was longtime friends with a Colorado newspaper man and saloon keepers from all over the West. In addition, he kept in touch with people he grew up with in Georgia. And as Doc lay dying in a Colorado hotel room in 1887, practically penniless, fellow gamblers and saloon keepers helped pay his bills. Unlike the scene in the movie Tombstone, Wyatt was not there when Doc died at age 36. Number 3. Wyatt Loved Hookers and Prostitutes Wyatt may not have been a drinker, but he loved ladies of the evening. In one year, 1872, he was arrested three times for keeping and being found in a house of ill repute. Wyatt was listed as living in a brothel with Jane Haspiel in February of 1872. It's unclear whether he was a pimp, an enforcer, or a bouncer in the establishment. Later in 1876, when his brother James opened a brothel in Dodge City, Wyatt went along with him. Number 2. Wyatt Met Doc Holliday on the Gambling Circuit Wyatt met fellow gambler John Henry Doc Holliday in Texas in 1878. Holliday, a Georgia native born in 1851, had studied dentistry in Philadelphia. In 1872, when he was diagnosed with tuberculosis, doctors recommended he move to a drier climate. He went to Dallas in 1873 and established a partnership with another dentist. However, Holiday soon shifted his attention from fixing teeth to drinking and gambling. Wyatt and Holiday became friends on the Texas gambling circuit in the late 1870s, and Doc participated in the gunfight at OK Corral in 1881. Number 1. Wyatt Stole His Rival's Woman Wyatt Earp and Johnny Behan had at least one thing in common. They shared the same taste in women. When Bean arrived in Tombstone, he brought his wife with him, a working lady named Sadie Mansfield. Most people, however, would know her by another name, Josephine Earp. It turns out that Sadie found her husband in bed with another woman soon after she arrived in Tombstone, so she kicked him out. Not long after, townsfolk started to see Sadie spending a lot of time with one white Earp, who everyone already knew as Bean's biggest rival. Hey, if Earp couldn't have Bean's job, at least he could have Bean's woman. And those are the 10 things you didn't know about Wyatt Earp. Which one surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments section. We hope you enjoyed our video. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and share it. And also subscribe to our channel and be sure to ring the notification bell to get notified when we upload new and interesting content. I'm Mickey V and until next time, goodbye.